A tēnā koutou ngā mātāua kei i hono hono mai i te ahia hi nei. E rere ana ngā mihi mai te kāhui maunga ki Tangaroa. E rere ana hoki ngā mihi mai mātou i te hāpuri ora o Wanganui. Nō reira tēnā tātou, tēnā koutou katoa. My name is Kylie Osborne. Disclaimer, not a not Dr. Kylie Osborne. And I am... Māori Workforce Development here at the DHB. Um, thank you for your time this afternoon. We're actually going to start our session um, with a video that gives you an overview of our hospital and our community. Tēnā kāreka katoa. Um, ko karerikira te moana, whangatoa tia te maunga, roma te marae, te rāroa te iwi, uh, ano hoki ko paringaringa te moana, ko maunga piko te maunga, ko te reo mihi te marae, ko ngā te kuri te iwi, ko Lorei Marsh te kuingua. Ngā mihi katoa e toru ngā iwi, ngā te kuri te aupori, te raroa. Um, I'm just briefly introducing myself as the RMA Recruitment Manager. Um, you'll have my contact details through ACE, and I'm more than happy um, for anyone to contact me if you ever need anything. My team are going to introduce themselves as well briefly, and um, then Louise is going to talk to um, what we need with the, um, within the application process, and then we're going to hand it over to Sam and Hugo, who are going to talk about, um, well, anything you want them to talk about, really. Um, but as our current um, or our, some of our most recent recruits, um, they've got a really good handle on um, what it's like to work here and um, the recruitment experience too. I'm Tina Koto Katoa, Ko Louise Tō Tokuengua, Ko Ruapehu Tamonga, Ko Wanganui Tawa. Um, Iti Tau 1996, e hare mai au ki Aotearoa, ki te nohu au ki Wanganui. Um, kia ora, I'm Louise Tō, I'm the business manager of the Wanganui D uh, Medical Management Unit at the Wanganui DHB, and I'm very pleased to call Wanganui home. Around applying for the position, what is really important to us is your covering letter. We want to know um, that you identify with our vision and our goals for the people of our region, and you want to be part of the mahi and the work that we do here to bring good health to the people of our region. Um, we are all in this waka together. We're all working alongside one another, and we all have different roles. Your skills are valuable to us um, as part of our team, and we would love you to join us as we work together for the benefit of the people of this region. Um, so what is important for us is that you identify with that um, and that you tell us about it in your covering letter. What is important is if you want to be part of what we are doing here, that you consider us um, ranking us as number one um, essentially, your ranking takes preference over our ranking, um, particularly in a small place like this, and we would love you to join us. Um, just to run through the different runs that we have, so as a PGY1 in Wanganui, you would be doing runs in general medicine, um, assessment, treatment, uh, rehabilitation, which is geriatrics, general surgery, orthopedics, and some people have an opportunity in psychiatry. We have had the odd person who um, has put up their hand for an ED run in their first year, um, although it's probably better in your second year. And we encourage everyone to have a chance in ED because it allows you for the first time to see and work up a patient for yourself before they've been admitted with a work up and a plan. And whilst your first two intern um, pre-vocational training years, there are steps in them that can be a little bit challenging. 
Um, they are designed, and it's particularly in a small place like this, to give you a really good grounding, good experience, good hands-on skills. Um, so we encourage you to apply for that. Um, with that, over to you two to tell us a little bit about a day in the life of an RMO in Wanganui. <laughs> Thanks, Louise. Kia ora, everybody. My name's Sam. I'm one of the first year house officers here in Wanganui. Um, and I'm Hugo, one of the PGI ones that have come up from um, Wellington as a TI. Um, I guess we can talk a bit about the life of a house officer. Um, I guess talk a little bit about DHB. Um, it's kind of a small to medium sized DHB. I think the population is about 50,000, but the catchment runs out towards Ruapehu, so it's actually closer to 75. Um, and because it's a, you know, a smaller DHB, it means the runs that you do do are quite hands on. Um, so, like Louise was saying, I've just come from my um, I've started a medicine run. Um, and it's far more hands-on than you'd get in the bigger tertiary centres. There's no subspecialties here. It's just general medicine. So there's no kind of um, uh, cardiology or neurology or gastroenterology. So all the patients that you uh, wouldn't see in a tertiary centre, you get to see and treat and learn how to manage here, uh, which has been really valuable in terms of, um, in terms of my learning. Um, the other runs that you can do are general surgery, orthopedics and geriatrics. Um, general surgery and orthopedics, uh, you have registrars with you um, to help support you. On medicine, uh, there's uh, no registrars at this stage, um, but I think there's been discussion about that possibly happening in the future. Yes, we, we're just about to start advertising for um, general medical registrars. Oh, yeah. So there will be more support for house officers in their first year from next year on. But that'll take a little while to establish that. But in the, yeah, and then there are also you know, some perks of, of not having registrars because you get to work quite closely uh, with your consultants. Um, and so there's a bit more teaching um, that you can have directly with them. Um, our consultants are very familiar with working directly with first year house officers. Um, so don't be intimidated by that. No. I think that's a very unique aspect of this hospital is that um, there isn't many places in the country where you get to work one on one with you and a consultant. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Usually in all the bigger cities, it's, it's you and another house officer maybe and a registrar or even a more advanced registrar. Um, so it's very unique in that way. And you get a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one hands on experience, but also the academic knowledge from your consultants as well. Um, and I think, you know, any first year job is quite intimidating. Doesn't matter if you're working in Auckland or Whanganui or Blenheim or wherever um, you're working, but I think here the opportunities are, are a lot higher um, than other centres for that reason of the one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. especially on the medical runs, yeah. So. And yeah, and now I'm on my ortho run. And um, again, it's quite different from the big tertiary centres in terms of the amount of paperwork you do is considerably less, which means you get a lot more time if you're interested in surgery to get down to theatre and go to clinics, which you don't get uh, in the bigger cities. That's what I've, that's what I've found. Um, in terms of PGY2 runs, it's it's very easy to get an ED run. Um, and ED runs are notoriously quite hard to get in other cities because they're generally quite popular. But in Wanganui, you're, most people will have to do an ED run. Yeah, we, we generally plan for everyone to do an ED run unless you want to opt out of it. And, and again, that's really helpful if you, if you did want to go into a surgical specialty because... Um, it's for some specialties, it's a prerequisite to have done ED. Uh, so that's something to, to note. Um, and there are also kind of registrar jobs available for ED, for ONG, um, surgery, emphasis of psych. 
Rich. Yes, this is the psych Rich. Rich. Um, there's orthopedic registrar positions and we have an anesthetic reg position for first year trainees now. I suppose we could run through um, what a day in the life of each of these runs looks like. I mean, I'm sure all of you listening would have been on the wards for a couple of years, so you sort of know what a general day looks like, but I'm happy to talk about a day in the life on medicine, which is what I did as well in my first quarter. I mean, maybe you can talk about your orthopedic days. Um, so generally, it's pretty similar to other centres. Uh, here on, on medicine, you start at 8 o'clock. Um, so you'll go to the morning handover, which is you and the other RMOs on the medical team and the SMOs. Um, so I think normally we have about half a dozen RMOs um, on a medical rotation at once and generally uh, four to six SMOs at one time, but it depends on leaving things. Um, so you go to handover and then you're assigned your consultant uh, over the progression of my 12 week run. I, I worked with a few different um, of the consultants that worked here, which is quite good. So you're not always with the same SMO all the time. Um, and that's good because you get to learn from a variety of different doctors and learn the different skills and things as well, which is really helpful to get a different perspective. Um, so as all of you are quite familiar with after handover, you go do your ward rounds. Um, on calls here are a bit, uh, not quite the same as other places, but um, so you might be on like a post-take team. They do three day on call weekends here. Um, so the SMO on call will be on call Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So generally a Monday for the post-take team will be quite busy and you'll probably have a couple of house officers on that team. Um, so you'll be rounding in the morning um, and here's where it's quite different to other places is that um, after your ward round, it's your consultant will go and do whatever they need to do if they're on call or if they have a clinic. Um, but then it's just you looking after the patients on the ward. Um, in other places, you'll have that registrar, but it's just you and whoever else is on your team on the ward looking after them. Um, so you have to do all the jobs from the ward around XYZ. I don't want to bore you guys too much on the jobs on general medicine. Uh, but as Hugo sort of highlighted, a general medical run in Monganui is, is not the same as a general medical run in a big city. Um, you don't really have the subspecialties here to sort of um, take the patients that would normally be under that specialty away from you. So you often see a lot of quite niche uh, and a broad spectrum of, of uh, patients here that might otherwise be under gastroenterology or cardiology or respiratory. Um, so you've got a broad stroke of knowledge and learning in that department. Um, so you do all the jobs for your patients, whatever you need to do, uh, and then Something quite unique here is that if you're with an SMO that's on call, um, it's your responsibility to go and do a lot of the admissions down in the emergency department. And a lot of the bigger cities that's usually uh, taken up by the registrar um, on the admitting team, but it's your job to go down to the emergency department. You see the patients through your history and your exam, um, and you can liaise with the, with the ED team and also your um, your consultant for a plan for that patient. So that's really good because it's not just all the paperwork that you're doing as a house officer on a medical run, you actually get to see patients and do procedures and um, hone in on all your skills that you learned through medical school and um, your clinical knowledge is really sharp at the end of, uh, of a medical run here. Um, so it's a lot more hands-on that you'd find in a bigger, in a bigger centre um, and if you're doing that for, you know, three, six or nine months through your years as a, as a PGY1 and a PGY2 here, um, I think you're going to be much more sharp and more hands-on and more practically inclined house officer than you would otherwise. So I think you definitely um, hone your skills quite well here on a medical run. Yeah. And in terms of long days and weekends, you have to work um, on medicine and surgery, right? Any run as a PGY1, you have to do one in three weekends. Um, and every third week, you need to do two long days. Um, the weekends are full long days, so they start 7.30 and they go through till 10.30. Um, if you're on yeah, medicine, um, over, over the weekend, 
Um, the only people in the hospital are generally the house officers um, and some of the surgical registrars and ED. So um, you kind of become the, the MET team uh, for the weekend. Um, uh, but generally the, 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 the consultants always um, yeah, help out if you need to give them a call. Um, after you've done six months, you can, um, my understanding is you choose either the Knights roster or you can um, stay on we, the weekend. We try to allocate everyone through Knights, so it might be quarter three or quarter four, yeah. so that you have a chance to do Knights before you get to PGY2. Another thing that, that is quite unique here, uh, we don't really have a full-blown ICU, but we have a critical care unit or a CCU, which is six bed space um, that essentially proxies as an ICU because you can do pretty much everything that an ICU can do. Like we have the capacity to have ventilated um, patients here, but the difference being is that there's not a dedicated ICU or critical care team. Obviously there's the nursing staff in there who are amazing and if you come here will be your absolute savior. Um, but if you're on a medical run or a surgical run and you have a patient that is in the ICU, then it's you and your team's responsibility to be looking after those patients. Um, so generally in other centers, if you have a patient in ICU, there's a dedicated ICU team there to look after them. Um, but here it's, it's you and the team that you're on. Um, so you get a lot more experience with dealing with quite ill patients, um, which on other runs and bigger centers, you don't really have that experience. Um, so it's essentially ICU level patients that uh, you have to assess and look after as well, which is really, really good experience. Um, and something that you miss out on in other centers. Um, the food's actually really good here compared to other hospitals that I've been at. Um, <laughs> you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> It's also very social, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really nice and, and you can sit outside, um, which is really good in the summer. Um, no, the food's really, I've found food quite good. Um, There's a nice long table down in the cafeteria where all the Oromos sit together and... Yeah, yeah. The whole squadron, yeah. The whole squadron. No matter where people are from, whether they're from overseas or yeah. local, it's it's a very nice social place. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, and in terms of the pay, it's um, considered a um, non-urban category C, uh, which is around $95,000. I don't know the exact figure, but I get uh, 2,000 and uh, yeah, $2,100 uh, a fortnight um, as a category C and all runs are considered category C at this stage. Um, in terms of accommodation and transport, um, Sam and I pay $145 uh, a week. If you get onto it early, it's quite easy to find. Well, if you get onto it early, you, you can find a place. Um, it can be a little tricky if you leave it late in terms of options, especially if uh, you're going in a, a group that's bigger than, bigger than three. Um, but I'd say the you know, the the average would be around yeah would be around what we're paying 145. Um, the price is really good here. Bring a place and yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So me and Hugo we lived together with um, another one of the RMOs and another uh, of our friends in town. I think the price and the cost of living here is really really cheap if you compare it to pretty much anywhere else in the country. Um, what he was explaining a little bit is that it can be hardish to find a place, but I think if you compare it to other cities in New Zealand, it's it's not hard at all. I think any place in New Zealand is hard to find accommodation at the moment. I think if anyone knows of an easy place to live in New Zealand, let me know. But um, I think it's, it's there's also a really good network. So as yeah. people leave tenancies, RMOs, um, there's often a good network of other yeah, yeah. RMOs taking over the Exactly, yeah. Place. yeah. yeah. Um, and I suppose that's a nice lead on into sort of um, the social aspect of, of this hospital. Um, so being a small hospital, there's, there's not a lot of staff if you compare it to Auckland or Wellington. Um, so generally, you pretty much know everyone in the hospital after a couple of weeks. 
And for me, that's really good because I like to meet people and yarn to people at work and it's really helpful. Um, after a couple of weeks, you know everyone's names and it makes the job a lot easier. Also, the RMO group is really good. Um, so I think there was about eight or nine of us first year RMOs who came here this year. And I think I knew probably eight of the nine. Um, but then also the PGY2s who are here, uh, for a PGY2, very, very competent and very, very experienced because they've had a year in Wanganui uh, from everything I just highlighted. Um, but there's also a lot of international RMOs who come over from the UK and Ireland. Um, they fill the role as like, as um, SHOs, but a lot of these doctors are, you know, three, four, five years out of university and they have a lot of experience under their belt and make your life a lot easier. And they're all really, really lovely and they come to New Zealand to work and have a good time. And um, all of us have had a pretty good time here in the first few months of our year. So I think it's a pretty awesome place in terms of the, the team that we have here. Uh, in the whole hospital, but also the RMO group as well. It's pretty fun so far. Mm. Um, just a couple of extra things in terms of transport. It's it's quite flat, so a lot of people cycle here. Um, a lot of people walk from home, uh, and you can also just drive in. And uh, it's not like Wellington, where I came from, where parking is an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Uh, there's on-site parking, um, which. It's fantastic means you can be up a bit later, have a bit more of a sleep and um, and the on site car parking is free. And it's free. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Hugo gets his beauty sleep before he comes in for his water round. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Louise, you've talked about the application process in terms of mm. the you know, good cover letter. What do you guys do for fun on weekends? For fun? Oh, we do lots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we go and play tennis. We're about a two minute drive to the tennis court. So we go there. We've been down to the market, which is every Saturday. This probably gives the Hawks Bay market a good run for its money. Really good market, yeah. Um, it's about an hour and a half from uh, Rupehu. So if you're a keen skier, uh, it's very easy to get over there, even if you just wanted to go for a day and come back. Um, there's a couple of mountain biking tracks up the river. Um, there's the river itself, um, which is one of the sort of one of the great walks, which is quite a popular thing to do. Uh, it's about a ten-minute drive to Castlecliff Beach, um, where people go surfing and fishing. Uh, there's free golf courses if that floats your boat. Um, yeah, and there are some good cafes, uh, and uh, yeah, the, the food's all right. You know. mm. Restaurants aren't great, but um, there are a couple of good bars and good cafes. This one uh, asks when you're on the ward and need a bit of help. Are there consultants? Are the consultants easy to get hold of um, when you need a bit of assistance or guidance? Yeah. Uh, so this probably more applies to the medical run, but also in other runs when you have a registrar there as well, you might need to call your consultant. But um, yeah, I know if you've worked in a bigger hospital, it can be quite intimidating to call your consultant because you know you're a house officer or you're a TI and they're the consultant. But here, all of the consultants are super, super lovely and. They understand that, especially on the medical run, it's it's them and a brand new house officer, especially early in the year. Um, so they're always very happy to receive your calls and answer your questions. Um, I know from my experience early in the year, even now, you know, it's only been a few months, but there was always a lot of questions because you actually learn a lot via the, um, on the job itself. But you always have a lot of questions at the start of the year and uh, even a text or a call, they're always really warm and really helpful like i think early on there's never a bad question like even all throughout um all throughout your career there's never a bad question because at the end of the day it's all about the patient and if you're not sure about something um then uh all the consultants here are very happy to answer your questions because they understand that as well because everyone was a house officer at some stage and 
everyone's new at some stage. So that's that, that's my two cents on that. Thanks for the question. Huge. Yeah, you know, whilst sure. you haven't got there yet, you'll find the same in ONG and pediatric yeah. and psychiatry. Yeah. Exactly. The predict teaching times on a, on a uh, Tuesday and a Thursday, um, that runs for, for about an hour. Um, go grab your lunch and um, go to that. And it is a big variety of teaching. They, they get a lot of different consultants in. Uh, we had one today from one of the ED consultants looking at kind of overdose presentations uh, and it goes some things like that to just managing common ward jobs um, and ward calls and diabetes management as an inpatient so it's a big spectrum of teaching that they do which is uh, which is really helpful. Do you guys support late starts or paired applications Lorraine or Louise? Um, yes we do we didn't have any this year um, I don't know if there were any paired ones this year but yes we do so thank you very much uh, for all of our students if they have any further questions please get in touch with Lorraine um, send her an email is probably the most efficient way um, she'll be able to answer you if you have any other questions about the ACE process get in touch with me as well um, by the ACE process and all the very best of luck to, to all of you and thank you everyone else for attending online cheers Hi. thanks Princess thanks no worries. Thank you. Thank you.